Oh my god, it won't blend. What a fucking nightmare. I'm just kidding. It's really not that bad. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we have a second look, a continued review, and a tutorial using the ever-controversial Anastasia Subculture Palette. I did a tutorial with this palette last week when I first received it. I loved the palette. I thought that it performed beautifully. And about an hour or two after I finished editing my video, shit just went fucking crazy on the internet over this palette. A lot of people were having trouble with this palette and like the first, I don't know, maybe like four or five looks that I've done with this, I had no issues whatsoever. None. Not a single issue. However, when I sat down to film this today and I went to use the color Axis all over my entire eye area and then blend that out into a smoky eye, I did start to see some of the issues that people were dealing with when they were using this palette. I'm also having an issue today where my fucking eyelashes will not stay on on this eye and they keep coming off and I'm gonna lose my shit. So as I was creating this look today, I did begin to see some of the issues that people were having with the palette. So I completely get it. I don't think that this palette is completely infallible. It's not like amazing perfect. It definitely has these issues that people are dealing with. It's not anybody's imagination. That being said, the issues that it has, you can work with them. You can work around them. They're not, it's not an unworkable, unusable palette. Um, but if you don't want to work to make your shadows work and you just want something that's like easy peasy every day kind of shit, maybe this is not for you. Me personally, I don't often sit down and do like a perfectly blended out, just like simple everyday eye look with colors like this. So for me, I don't have any issues with this. This is not something that's going to be going back. I'm not returning it. I'm going to continue to use it and I still like it very much. But at the same time, I wanted to do like an update on my review of it because the first impression that I had of it was this is perfect. I can't imagine how anybody wouldn't like this. The pigmentation is amazing. And even when I first saw like the first videos of it, I was like, what the fuck? Like, that is not the palette that I was working with. However, uh, you know, after like, after today, though, I can tell you that there definitely are some issues. It's just, it's just, they're not, they're not the end of the world. They're not that bad. I do understand why people are upset by it because you expect a lot from Anastasia, which is hilarious because even in my video, I had no idea that people were having a hard time with this palette and I was enjoying it. And I just sat there and said, I can't imagine Anastasia ever coming out with a palette that's a flop. And then it's the fucking flop of the century in a lot of people's eyes, which is hilarious to me. It's like, really? Really? So all week in my head, I had an idea for this like Aurora inspired look. Whenever I saw people layering the color electric over the color Axis, it gives like this really pretty green shining effect that reminds me of the Aurora. So I wanted to do something like that all week. And I knew that that would require me to do like a classic smoky eye under it with that deep shade. So I figured this was a good way to like really test the blendability of the palette. And boy was I right because as soon as I sat down to do that, I started to see all of the things that people were talking about. As I was doing it though, I kind of figured out little ways to make it work. Instead of getting frustrated, I tried to work with it and it really wasn't that hard to work with. You just kind of have to know what to do with it. I also understand that a lot of people don't want a palette that they need to know what to do with. They want it to just work. So if you're one of those people, like, don't get me wrong. Please go ahead and return your palette if you don't like it. Like, don't take my word for it. Do what makes you happy. But if you have your palette and you want to keep it and you want to make it work, then uh, my tips might be helpful for you. So stick around until the end of the video where I explain what I learned as I did the shadows. Um, you'll see a little bit of it throughout the video because I was kind of learning how to deal with it as I went along. But I really kind of formulated the ideas in my head toward the end. The inner corner of my lashes is driving me absolutely batshit crazy. So I'm going to shut up now. We are going to jump into the tutorial and I will show you guys exactly how I did this Aurora inspired look, exactly the issues that I ran into, and then update you guys with how I worked around them. 
To start, we're going to use a transition shade. As usual, I'm going to grab the color Dawn because that's kind of like the near my skin tone shade in this palette on a Sigma E40 blending brush. I'm gonna run that through the crease. I'm gonna bring it up on the high side because this is going to be a very smoky, blown out look. So I want my transition to come up high so I can continue that blend higher if I need to. I'm going to start smoking out the crease with a little bit of this color Untamed on a Sigma E38 diffused crease brush. I'm going to pick up this shade Axis on a Sigma E55 shader brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit more of the color Untamed on the same brush and bring that little bit right into here. I just feel like maybe this inner corner could be darker. Okay, all kidding aside, now that I am trying to do like a very seamless, classic, smoky eye with this, I am beginning to see where people are having trouble here. And what I'm noticing is the major issue comes in when you put color down and then try to blend over the top of the pigmentation. It's almost as if the top layer of pigmentation never really sticks down, but then when you blend it away, it kind of lifts off the rest of the pigment with it. Do I hate this? No. Um, do I understand why people are having trouble? Absolutely I do. So I am going to add a whole bunch of powder under my eyes to collect any fallout. Um, I do think that it's workable. It's not a completely unusable palette, but it might not be the most user-friendly thing in the world. I think this color is gorgeous, but I do see what people are saying is if you put too much color on at one point and then try to blend that out, it kind of lifts itself off and then goes away, which I'm not sure if that's like a lack of a binder in the shadow because uh, you know shadows are pigment plus binder. So these, like I said, are a lot more similar the way they behave to like a loose pigment. So I'm wondering that if maybe that's why it doesn't stick to the eye quite as much. Um, if you are having issues blending this palette out when you use it, what I would suggest, and I fucked it up a little bit here on this eye, but on this eye, you can see like I got a really good blend with it because I just kind of was like learning from my own mistake. If you put down a color and then blend it out and you find that it's picking up, just what you wanna do is take a clean brush and only blend along the edge of that color. Don't try to blend over where you've packed a lot. So if you put down a bunch of color on the lid and you wanna blend that out, literally just tickle the edge out with a clean brush rather than taking a big fluffy blending brush and going like you normally would. It's very easy to over blend these and blend them away. That's what seems to be the major issue here. Okay, so off camera, I just smoked out the lower lash line with a little bit of the color Rowdy and a little bit of the color All Star, and then I just tight lined and filled in my waterline with a black liner. I'm trying to do only the important parts of this tutorial that are more interesting on camera because my battery is about to die. But I definitely do have an updated uh, opinion about this palette after using it for a look like this. So stick around to the end of the video to see that because not only do I have uh, some insight, but I also have a few workarounds if you have this palette and you don't want to return it, but you're having trouble. So hang on for that. Next, I'm going to grab a little bit of the color Electric. I'm going to wet my brush with my Hangover 3-in-1 spray. And I'm going to create kind of like a reverse halo effect with that, not putting an extra dark spot in the center, but actually putting the metallic in like kind of like a painty stripe form on the outer portions of the top lid.
Okay, so my camera died before I finished the makeup, but all you guys missed was uh, mascara and lashes, which I usually do off camera anyway, and lips, which uh, in case any of you were wondering, this is the Anastasia Liquid Lipstick in the color Allison. Now, regarding this palette, I do have some thoughts. I definitely do have an updated opinion since I did that tutorial last week with the first impression included. First of all, does this palette have some issues? Yeah. Yeah, this palette definitely has some issues. Do I hate it? No, I don't hate it. If you have this palette and you're trying to work with it, a lot of times what I would personally do and what a lot of other people do when they put down a shadow and then blend it out is put down a shadow and then blend it out in all directions right from the center of where you put the shadow down. These, it's imperative that if you want to blend them properly, you put them down and then blend only along the very, very edge of where you want to blend the shadow out. So using a smaller blending brush might be helpful to you if you're having a hard time and also just be very cognizant that you're not passing back over where you pack the shadow down because there's just too much pigment there. I think that all of it can't stick properly and then you end up blending it away instead of blending it out onto the rest of the eye. That being said, I only noticed that issue with one or two of the shades. Uh, the one shade that I noticed it the most with was Axis. But as you can see, I did wind up getting a decent smoky eye out of the situation. It's not like I couldn't do it. I just had to be very aware of what I was doing. Another tip, if you are using this and you're trying to blend two colors together and you're noticing that the color is picking up and like disappearing rather than blending into the color next to it, Instead of using a swiping motion, use a tapping motion. So just tap, 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 tap over the top of the two colors that you want to blend together with one of the brushes that you use to put those colors down and they'll blend together beautifully. If you go back and forth over them, it picks it up, color is gone. Now, does that mean that I still think that this palette is a great buy for everyone? Not for everyone. I still like it. I will definitely still use it because I don't mind those workarounds. Like I said in the first video, these remind me a lot of loose pigments. So uh, if I just treat them the way that I use loose pigments, it doesn't, it's not that difficult to use that I'm just like, fuck this palette, I'm never using it again. This is a piece of garbage. It just, it's not the easiest palette to work with. That is for sure. Um, but that being said, I do still really like it. The times that I would not recommend this palette is if you are looking for something that's like an easy go-to day-to-day palette that you want to use, this is not for you. If you are a beginner in makeup, also definitely not for you. Uh, if you are looking for something that's going to give you a quick option, not for you. So in conclusion, the people who are having a hard time with this palette, they're not idiots. They're not bad at makeup. The palette definitely does behave strangely. Uh, I personally happen to like the way the shadows work and they work to my advantage for the style of makeup that I do. However, if you're the type of person who loves like that, like perfect blend, total glamour, like Jaclyn Hill style makeup, you probably won't like this palette very much. And that's a fact. So I hope that you guys maybe find it a little bit helpful if you are somebody who has the palette and is trying to make it work. If you have the palette and you don't want to make it work and you just want to return it, they did say that they would take back palettes that people weren't enjoying. So I would suggest that if you don't like it that much, send it back because like that's your hard earned money, man. Like. That's what return policies are for. That is pretty much all I have to say for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and found the little tips on how to make this palette work for you if necessary helpful. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it because that really helps me out in the grand scheme of things. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I would love to have you guys stick around, be my buds, talk makeup, all that good stuff. Don't forget to follow me on social media. I am at Miss Quinface on Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter, mostly Instagram and Twitter these days. I'll link that all here on the screen and also in the description below. That's all for today. I hope you found this helpful and informative and maybe enjoyed the tutorial, and I will see you in the next one.